Hey there friend, and welcome back. My name is Sarosk, and I want to give a massive and huge thank you to every single one of you who have reached out recently just to check in, say hello, make sure we're doing all good and all okay. I'd list every single one of you, but I don't want to forget anyone, but I just know from the bottom of my heart that I thank you guys so much for checking in on me. And again, reasons why I'm still posting videos like these, like the one I posted yesterday, is to show all sides of this work. And it, for me, I'm starting to see that all my meditations are coming together, and this is just bigger parts that have been buried for so long that are coming up and that I need to work with so that with them they don't come up again. The way that I have been feeling the past week, I guess you could say, are parts and pieces of me that I haven't felt in like eight to ten years. I know I know them, I'm familiar with them because when they were a thing in my vibrational escrow, I guess you could say, um, I felt them for a very long time and I couldn't figure out how to stop feeling that type of way. Um, but I recognize and identify what's happening and I really think that I've just gotten rid of so many layers that I'm finally starting to hit a lot of the like root causes and triggers. Like the way that I felt on Sunday, oh my god, I have not felt that low and that bad in a very long time. So this is, I definitely think, the work working and it's the way in which that I am approaching it and handling all of it. This is the way that I'm handling it. The way that somebody else would handle their own stuff is totally different. Again, I'm here speaking because I just want to share what I'm going through because I literally went from being on top of the world feeling so good to like I can't get out of bed because I'm just, I don't want to call it depression. It's just I have no energy and zero motivation. Like, I just, I can't, it physically hurts me to get out of bed. <laughs> Nothing medical, I promise, I swear. It's definitely energetic. And it's something that I've struggled with for my whole life. And I could just be super exhausted, because again, I go all day, every day, trying to find time to, you know, get pieces of things done. It's just overwhelming and impossible sometimes for me. And I also have not had downtime for myself lately, which is something that I need. I've been burning my candle at like both ends. But again, this is just me. If if I wanted sympathy from people, I wouldn't show up. <laughs> this is me sharing my experience so that way then you could possibly learn something from what I'm going through or just don't do what I'm doing. <laughs> you could be like, oh crap, yeah, no, she didn't handle that well at all. I'm gonna try this <laughs> instead and see if that works better for me. But I'm here. <laughs> I showed up again today, which is, again, kind of big for me at the moment, so I'm celebrating small victories. I was able to wake up and, and do a meditation with a few people, and then I went and worked with Duke this morning, took care of Abigail and Duke, and I meditated for about an hour and a half this afternoon. I did the, uh, one of the, uh, whatchamacallit, breaking the habit of being yourself meditations. It's the body parts in space. We got to my nose, and I was out. I was totally gone. <laughs> I was just in and out of consciousness. I needed to do that. I helped. It really helped to get me rebalanced, refocused, reframed. Um, I'm still feeling on the shutdown side, but I'm I'm here and I'm functioning, which is huge. And I'm also able to sit and recognize where these emotions and everything are coming from. I have been listening to so many inspirational things. People have been sending me such incredible stuff. One person in particular that I really want to thank is Jen Jace because she sent me something incredible this morning. Also, Miss Margie, thank you for sending me all the emails with all those videos too. I really enjoy getting them as well. Um, but Jen Chase sent me something this morning that really like clicked and I loved it. And it made me think, because you know how much I love to think and I love my words. <laughs> um, but she sent me an Abraham clip and it had to do with self-love and unconditional love for yourself. And in the clip, Abraham had said, you know, if somebody serves you a dish, it doesn't mean that you have to eat it. And the way in which they said it, I was like, huh, that makes sense. I get served dishes all the time thinking that I have to eat it when I don't have to, I can just politely refuse and carry on, and if somebody gets offended, that's kind of on them. Um, and the need to be a people pleaser. One 
key thing that I took away as well is you can't be a pleaser of others and also maintain your alignment at the same time. That was huge for me. And we're gonna unpack this a little bit because I want to explain where it's coming from for me and from my end and where all this stuff originated. Again, I'm just giving you context. I'm not talking about my past for the sake of talking about it. Like I've made peace with everything that has happened to me growing up. It's just I'm using it as an example in case somebody else is going through it and needs help understanding what's going on. One thing that I'm super thankful and super proud of is the fact that I'm able to communicate and identify what's happening. When this emotion used to happen to me when I was younger, I would get so angry and shut down. I would shut down so hard. Like it was impossible for people to talk to me and I would just lash out because I didn't know what was happening. Now I'm surrounded by a bunch of amazing individuals who love me for me and like that in itself, like I actually feel, I actually feel something. The Grinch's heart grew three sizes that day. <laughs> like it just, it's really awesome that these people are giving of their time to, to text me and keep up with me and reach out to me and send me these things that say, hey, like I thought of you when, you know, I saw this. I also want to be that kind of a person. I get so in my head where I'm like, I don't want to bother somebody. And I know that nine times out of 10, I'm not a bother, but that's one of those limiting beliefs in my brain that if I text somebody, I'm bothering them because I want to talk to them. That's also something that happened in my past. But these bigger triggers that have been going on, a lot of you know, a lot of you maybe don't know if you're a new subscriber. Hi, thank you for your support. Um, growing up, I was in a household that was surrounded by domestic violence. It was wonderful. My dad drank a lot and he was just a very sick individual and he would take it out on his family. He couldn't communicate what was wrong. So growing up, I was not able, I never really learned how to communicate my emotions. If I was angry or upset, I would yell or shut down because if I yelled at him, oh, forget about it. <laughs> it. It's not pretty. So, ergo, didn't really learn how to communicate. And I needed to keep myself safe when I was around him. So I couldn't be my authentic self. And I never felt safe at home. You know, my mom did her best. She tried. And we couldn't really go anywhere. Like, our situation was just really tricky. Um, but I then developed this coping mechanism of having to please other people in order to keep myself safe. And it was the same thing growing up with, you know, friends and stuff. I had a very hard time keeping friends because an upset would happen, I would get left out, or I would be feeling a specific type of way, and I didn't know how to communicate it effectively or properly. And people would just stop talking to me and ignore me and say things about me. And then of course I would shut down again from that because that hurt. And I never knew what the problem was when, you know, the problem was me, but because of the environment that I was in. And then, you know, growing up, it kind of followed me because I didn't really have these tools and a way to explain and express what's happening. And as I'm going through all these upsets and all these triggers, I'm seeing those parts of me start to come back and needing to feel safe and needing to please others in order to keep myself safe. I can't tell people no because I'm afraid it's gonna upset them when really I have zero energy to give. Like I am literally depleted of energy and I cannot give of myself, but I am so terrified of being screamed at and the ramifications of what's gonna happen, this action will have consequences. Like what's gonna happen to me if I say no because I'm trying to set up a boundary for myself. Boundaries are a huge thing that I never got to establish as a kid. And, you know, I'm so lucky and so thankful that I have people in my life who are able to literally hold my hand and say, hey, let's help you. Let's, you know, this is what has helped me pick and choose, like, what could possibly help you get through this as well. And as an almost 30 year old, I'm learning what I should have learned when I was like, you know, four to 10 years old and so on. So I'm getting there. 
and I'm getting there one day at a time and I'm recognizing how to handle this as someone who is, you know, a student of wisdom, who is someone who wants to be a healer, a motivational speaker, and I'd rather be going through all of these upsets now than when I make it and then all of a sudden I decide to have like a huge meltdown. Like, that's not really good. And I want to be able to handle this in stride. My meltdowns used to last for, god, months. Thankfully this has only been like a week. <laughs> and they don't really come that often and I really, really think that all of this is just because I've been churning up so much inside of myself, sitting with myself every single day for hours and being able to connect and get through pieces of me that we're now getting to like the core wounds that are within me and to be able to finally release them once and for all and be okay with it and be good with it. And it's through no coincidence that I have this YouTube channel and that I'm able to share what I'm going through with you. And thankfully a lot of the venom has been taken out of this too. I was feeling a type of way yesterday, but I needed to show up. And sometimes you have to see that too. Like we can't, like we, we have a choice to be happy and we have a choice to be sad and we just have a choice to be who we are and express it. And it's okay to be that way. And I love myself from yesterday. I love myself from the day before. I love myself when I'm so happy and I love myself when I'm so sad. And you know, at times it's more important to love yourself when you are feeling that way to have like that self love. I really love giving to others when I'm in a really good state. Like I just give so much of myself. It's also very important to feel that same love for you. And that is kind of like the big picture message that I'm getting through all of this is just unconditional love for yourself and self-love. Not needing to be a perfectionist, which is something big <laughs> that I'm also going through. And also not needing to be a people pleaser and being able to say, hey, no, I'm sorry, I can't do this. Hey, you know, this just isn't working for me. And if somebody has an upset or a meltdown about it, that's not on you. The way in which you come across and the way in which you execute that, you could be like, no, like, you know, they might get a little offended. Be gentle. <laughs> but if you're like, hey, like, I'm sorry, like, I can't, I really can't do that. And you're nice about it. If they have an upset about it, again, you know, that's kind of, that's on them. They have to handle themselves. You did what you could. So lots of really good lessons have come out of this. And as I keep getting more insights and more things start to come through, um, I'll keep talking and, and sharing about it. I had one perfectionist thing because I'm so, self-confidence is a huge thing that I'm really working on. And I really wanted to start wearing hats because it's humid as hell here. I'm like, it's, it, I'm dying in here, it's so hot. Bailey is actually not panting like she was yesterday. And poor Charlie's really upset because <laughs> my light stand is on his dog bed. Charlie, you're not happy with the lights in your spot. Oh, you're so cute. Um, but a good friend of mine, Jody, sent me this really awesome snapback for uh, my birthday. It's a Patagonia one. And it's really funny because Julie also has Patagonia snapbacks that she always wears. And I'm really happy I got it. And I always thought that I looked awful in hats. Um, but I really think I look pretty cool in it. I've already stained it because of my red hair. <laughs> it's a blue hat. It's really cool. But feeling self-conscious, but with the, the day that I went to go walk out of the house wearing it, I asked my sister a million, million and one times. I was like, am I okay wearing this? Do I look okay wearing this? She's like, can you just shut up and like, just go? But not needing to be like that, and obviously not, you know, dressing in type of way where I get like super, super looks, but being able to feel confident within myself that no matter what I'm doing, even if I get made fun of for it, just loving myself unconditionally and knowing that it's okay and things don't have to be perfect and if I make a mistake, something happens, I can keep myself level-headed and work through it. So those are the insights that have kind of come through within the past couple of days, 24 hours, I guess you could say. Um, yeah. So I hope that you found some of this stuff helpful. I will be announcing the giveaway winners shortly. <laughs> Sorry it's taken me so long. Like I said, I needed to kind of hit the reset button on myself. I set myself back to Wumbo. And now we're doing okay. 
we're getting there. I think we're, we're starting to get back on track and back into alignment, which is fantastic. Just wait, when I'm on the other side of this, oh my god, it's gonna be amazing. I talk about unstoppable. I will be unstoppable. It's gonna happen. Yeah. So, friend, thank you so much for listening, and just promise me you'll keep singing. Okay, friend?